The moral of this story is that when you choose, whether it's a bumper sticker or a crazy picture on Facebook or whatever it is, to publicize to the world certain things about yourself, you should not be surprised that they cause people to think and make assumptions. All right. So the choices you make, and especially when you go to college, because I am Facebook friends with some of my former students, and I have had to have some come to Jesus moments over the last couple of years, where I'm like, do you realize what you just put on the internet? Like, come on right now. Like, you have to, you have to be careful about what you're putting out there, because as we were told earlier this morning, the world is a big, creepy van. All right. So, in a nutshell, sum up what I, was kind of, uh, what I came here to talk to you about. Number one, don't be surprised if life takes you in a different direction than what you think it's going to do right now. And be okay with going with the flow. Because there are some people that will lose their minds, and you'll watch it happen. Right? But you have to be ready for those little surprises that life is going to throw at you. Second thing is to remember that while money is a super awesome thing, and I love money and I love nice things, all right, it is much more important that you go to work and love what you're doing. Because there is, there are moments, yes, where I, you know, everyone has a bad day. But there is not a single school year in the last 10 years of teaching that I have not been able to look back and said, man, I loved my students this year. And really, out of all the other stuff that we do as teachers, right, which you don't necessarily see, the moments that make us the happiest are when we're actually teaching. And that is what you need to look for in your job. And my friends don't have that. A lot of them don't have that. And they're, they're excited. They love working at Arthur Anderson. Or they love their office job because they make $120,000 a year right out of college and they are done at 5 o'clock. But I wouldn't trade that for what I have. And it's hard for them to understand sometimes why I would want to do those things, those extra thing, things, chaperone prom, come here and, and give this speech, those things that take time out of your weekend or things like that. And they don't realize it because they are so unhappy in their, in their jobs that if their boss came to them and said, hey, do you want to do this? It's going to be on a Friday night and you'll get done around 11 o'clock. They would laugh and be like, there is no way unless you threaten to fire me that I'm going to do that. Right? And that's what makes your decisions at this point so vitally important to the rest of your life. Do you want to end it and be able to look back and say, man, I really did a lot of people's taxes this year and that was awesome. And some of you might. Some of you might love doing math, and you're doing a legitimate, wonderful service for people like this guy who stopped taking math this junior year in high school, right? But for some of you, you have to make that decision, and you have to make it soon. Next thing, you need to demand respect from people. I'm going to tell you a little hypothetical story right now. Let's say at the end of your senior year in college, you, actually, let's say that next year you go to college and your freshman year, um, you're going through your freshman year and this is a hypothetical scenario. And you are happy, you're content, you're making some new friends, but you just get done with the end of the day, you hang out with them and you have a good time when you're there, but you get home and something is not right. Something's different. The way somebody talked to you, or the look, or whatever it is. That's not acceptable anymore. You don't have to play those games anymore. All right? And that's what you have to start to think about. These people in this room are wonderful, and you've had a wonderful time with them. All right? But you're moving on at this point, and you have to think, I only want the people in my life, and how much time are you going to have in your life to go back and say, these are the people that respect me and that I respect on many levels. And think about that and make those considerations when you're deciding how to spend your time and who to spend your time with. All right. And then the last thing is have fun. Because if you take life too seriously, you miss out on things like the shard attack. <laughs> All right. And that's sad because everybody needs that joy in their life. Everybody needs the reason to smile. All right. And you need to think about that. 
There's a quotation that is usually attributed to Ralph Waldo Emerson, it's, it, despite the fact that most people don't think he said it. Um, and it says that success is to laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children, to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends, to appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, to live the world, to leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child, a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition. To know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived, this is to have succeeded. And I recently read that uh, uh, one of my students wrote something that this, their goal in life was to make as much money as they possibly could, as soon as they possibly could, because that's going to be awesome. Right? And at the same day that I read this, I read an article titled, Class of 2010, Nobody Wants You. All right. What does that mean? I know. I'm like the police officer right now, or the fire department. <laughs> and we're not going to save you. Um, and so I read the article, I'm like, this is depressing, this is a Debbie Downer right now. And I read the article, and the article talks about how this generation is the first generation that economically might potentially, very well could be, will be, the first generation that overall does not perform better than the previous generation. Right. Why? Yeah. How does that make you feel? But the, the reason that this is uplifting and not the fire department telling you that they're going to leave you in a burning building is <laughs> that this is an opportunity for you right, to take that where every other generation before you was setting out on their life's journey with the goal of doing better economically than the previous generation. But this, I think, is an opportunity for you to have that stress off your shoulders and to realize that you all have grown up in immense privilege to be sitting in this room. All right? Even those that, you know, from the wealthy to the like, poorest at Friend High School have privileges that 90% of the world will never understand or know. And so you have an opportunity right now to take the world the global village that we live in and make it different, to make one life breathe a little bit easier. And that's kind of exciting. So, uh, in conclusion, I want you to look around the room really fast and uh, say to these people, before you leave today, uh, appreciate these moments like the moment I had on the top of the Andes Mountains, right? Because they don't last very long. And when students ask me if they should pay money to come to brunch or go to the picnic or, you know, or if they should just go home or what they should do, I'm always telling them to do these things because these are the moments that pass in a flash, right? And they are the moments that will never repeat themselves. You'll never be sitting in a room like this with all these people again, all right? And that's kind of exciting because these people have laughed, right? They've laughed with you. We've already laughed today. They've cried with you, they've been the ones that have shared affection with you, they've learned from you, and they've breathed easier because of you, right? Because you've been there for them at some time or some point, right? And uh, having said that, uh, I want you to make sure that you realize that your teachers feel the same way. That as teachers, we really put so much of ourselves into what we do with you and we do it because we want to make sure that you have those tools to go out and make, a, make one person breathe a little bit easier. And some of you have read for your English class a poem called Thanatopsis. And Thanatopsis is Greek and it, and it oftentimes translates to a memorial to death. And so in light of the fire department and the police department, I'm going to share with you the very end of that poem because I think that the end of that poem is not really um, necessarily that sad. And uh, it goes, So live that when the summons comes to join the innumerable caravan which moves to that mysterious well realm where we each shall take his chamber in the silent halls of death. Thou go not like the grip, quarry slave at night, scourged by his dungeon, but sustained and soothed by an unfaltering trust. Approach thy grave like one who wraps the drapery of his couch about him and lies down to pleasant dreams. So we all, all of your teachers, everyone at Fremt High School, wish you the greatest success. And we wish that you have a life 
that at the end of it, you can look back on and say, I did something good, and somebody breathed a little bit easier because of me. Thanks.